Grappling Groundwork is the official podcast of Grapplerpedia.com. Now, here's your host, Professor Tony Mathers. What is going on, everyone? Welcome to the podcast. I am Professor Tony, your host. Batman trains using firearms. He knows how to use a gun. I drop that anecdote whenever I'm I'm teaching my students and they know me. I'm a huge nerd. Surprise for those of you listening. But whenever I drop that fact on them, they always laugh because one, you know, I'm just randomly talking about superheroes while we're training. But that's something to me that when I read it always stuck with me. And I've joked before how Batman and Goku are, you know, my dads. The thing with Batman, when when I read that, how he trains with firearms, that just, it always stuck with me. Uh, And I really forget what it was, but, you know, it was like a flashback in early 2000s, late in in the 90s, maybe, where he's training Robin. And uh, he's like, all right, well, you know, today we're going to learn how to shoot guns. And Robin was all confused. Like, why are we doing that? Uh, We don't use guns. And Batman says, well, our enemies use guns. We need to understand the tools that our enemy uses so that way they can't be effectively used against us. Man, that just always stuck with me. Jiu-Jitsu is vast. You can get lost in the sea of all the different techniques and moves. I mean, clinging to the latest hotness, just sticking to the fundamentals, listening to all the different instructors. It's incredibly easy to become very vanilla and mediocre with your jiu-jitsu. Everyone always says, find something you're good at. It takes time, but when you do, it, it can be. It could, that's where most people really propel. They find the one thing they're good at, the one pass series, the one technique, or the one concept like... I'm going to go for the rear naked choke, which means no matter what they're doing, they're figuring out how to take the back, escaping so that way they can expose the back, take the back, and get the rear naked choke, right? That's great, but what people fail to realize and what they need to do is train against all the things that could possibly go wrong. I have my house style. I have the way I teach my students. I've like narrowed down what I think is the better jujitsu. Now we can sit here and talk about it all day and get into arguments, right? But I've helped my students by narrowing the field by saying like, look, there's a hundred submissions. We're only going to get good at 10 of them in this school. That's it. Right. I'm just picking random numbers. Uh, you know, there's all different kinds of guards. Well, if you're going to learn a guard, you're going to learn one of these guards because this is how we're going to operate. That I think is very freeing and can help people better and do more with their jujitsu because then they're not splitting their their focus. They can really lean on other people and you can have a whole series of experts. And I mean, this has been proven with the Dan Herdette squad. They're all great at leg locks. That's what they train. That's what they do. How does this link back to Batman? Simple. I don't want to fail my students. So for example, one thing that I don't really care for and I don't train is spider guard. If anyone ever uses the gi, or heck, even you know, if they got some kind of gloves on in MMA, spider guard is pretty common. That's something that's one of the uh, most used open guards. So it's it's very possible they're going to encounter that. And I don't want to fail my students where they go out there and someone just puts them in a basic ass, ass spider guard. They have no clue what to do. So I make sure to include in my curriculum is all the other things that people might do. Part of my cu- curriculum has pass the spider guard. Here, explain how spider guard works, pass it, that's it. We don't go over anything else really, like how to do sweeps or how to do submissions. I show it to them from a perspective so that way they can learn how to defend against it, but we don't really take the time to specialize with it. Same thing with rubber guard. That's not something that's all too common, but anyone that's under me who gets at at least a brown belt, if not a purple belt, they better know how to pass rubber guard. It's something that people can do, and I don't want them to you know, I'm high level, I do this stuff, and it just takes a simple move to stop them. That's embarrassing for me because I failed my student like that. So I make sure that I take the time to find all the different weapons that people do. It doesn't matter. I mean, like, I include Uma Plata in my fundamentals, but I never really go into high level Uma Plata submissions or setups or things like that because to me, that's, 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 that's not one of the base moves that I want us to get good at. But you better believe it that we train how to defend against it constantly. Yeah, it kind of has the side benefit of making us better at Uma Pilatas, but it's not our focus. We're, for example, we're really focused at Kimuras, all the different ways we can set it up, really getting down into all the things that can go wrong so that way we specialize in Kimuras. It doesn't matter the angle or um, the position, we go after Kimuras. So we get really good at that. And obviously we're really good at defending. But that's something that we that we do. 
make sure that even if it's something you don't train for, that it's something that you don't really like to do that isn't part of your game, you better make sure you have an answer for it. You, and you need two answers for everything. So make sure you got two answers for that rubber guard pass. You got two answers for that De La Hiva, that spider guard, the closed guard break. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what you train, but you better make sure you have the answer for it. Why? Because it's the tools that your opponents use. And you better know it, not only so that way you can be an expert, but so that way nothing can stop you. I don't want you to go out there and you know someone suddenly slams you in rubber guard and then you're just you're stuck and that's it. Batman doesn't use guns, but he sure as shit knows how to use them. That's all I got for you. I hope that little story and metaphor helped you out. Let me know in the comments if it does. If you have another little strange anecdote from your life that helps you out with your training, let me know. Podcast at grapplerpedia.com. That's all I got for you. Like, share, subscribe, review, all that stuff that I am obligated by the podcasting council to say. And I'll catch you next time.